What happened? I, I don't even know. What do you mean you don't even know? I just walked through something and then I don't know. I don't know what just happened. I disappeared somewhere else. See, I think you do know. You just need to explain it. No. Yes. Oh, what the? I'm in now. I'm now. I'm in this purple view. I don't. I don't even know. Mm. You okay. do know. Uh, I think you do. But let's let's sound this. Blah 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 blah. blah, blah. Let's start the sound check while you're playing Ow. Xbox oh. on your phone. Oh god. Um, Just get in the right position. Okay. Sound check. Sound check. Sound check. Sound check. Sound check. Sound check. Oh yeah. Check. Check it. Check. 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 To the check. Ed. Check. All right. So. There we go. The Chucky monster went to Checkland, and in Checkland he found the legendary Super Check. Is Checkland in Eastern Europe? Um, it's actually in double southwestern Europe. Southwestern oh, wow. Europe. Oh, yeah. Sounds like a, a sauce from Subway. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. Check out our new sandwich with our double southwestern sauce. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good. So are you done with your double southwestern sound check? <laughs> I have to visit the check house first. <laughs> Maybe then I'll be done. All right. Sound check done. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this new episode of the Cross Gen Podcast. Yes, Eli is still still playing with our topic today. Yeah, I'm still um, trying to figure out how all of this works so before we we let everybody know what our topic is today um i am going to say that i am walt guys introduce yourselves eli this is x-man xbox x pass um x what this is involved today X-Men, X-Pass, oh god, what is it called? The... X-Gen? Cross-Gen? No, 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 the... The, the thing, Game but, Pass. What, Game pa- X, X Game Pass AJ. I'm, I'm, what? <laughs> I, I'm confused, why? Don't even know. <laughs> but, okay, so... Um... Again... You know, we have our our little maintenance that we have to do at the top of every episode. But um, if you love our episode, and again, I know you do, please remember to rate, review, and subscribe to the show. That is the best and easiest way to show some love for the CrossGen podcast. And with that being said, let's get started. Today's episode is going to be a video game heavy episode. So if you are into video games... Um, this is going to be a really cool episode for you because we're going to be talking about something very, very specific about video games. We're talking about the newest, well, I can't say it's really new, but there's a beta version for the iOS platform where Microsoft has made available to anybody who has an Apple product and you're part of Game Pass Ultimate and you got a special invitation to try the beta, they are letting people try the cloud gaming feature that's upcoming for their platform. And basically what that is, is that you will be able to play Game Pass and all the hundreds of games on Game Pass and it's gonna on be, a mobile device yeah, or mobile. your computer or your laptop oh, or really? your tablet. Yes. As long as you have a compatible controller. And that's the second part of our podcast today because we are also going to be reviewing the controller that we bought to use to test, to beta test cloud gaming. And that is the Razer Kishi. And that's the iOS version because there is an Android version that was out. So let's talk about the Razer Kishi really quick before we get started. 
Okay. Um, the Razor Kishi, like I said, there are two um, available types of Razor Kishi, one that's made specific for Android and one that's made specific for iOS. And the iOS one just came out recently because the beta test literally is like a week old. Hmm. So um, we I, next time what we're going to do is we're actually going to do a video unboxing, right? Yeah, I think that's a, a best way to do it. But I'm going to try and give you a verbal unboxing, <laughs> so to speak, of what I remember. So the Kishi comes in a very, very small package. You you would tend to think that it's bigger because when it's when it's out, it's about the size of a uh, Nintendo Switch. But the box itself is probably maybe about six inches long and stuff. And so w when you take it out, you have the Kishi that's compacted. And it's a, a clever little ingenious thing that they do that make it easy for you to travel around with this thing. Because this thing collapses. And so you have the two pieces of the controller, the left side that has a joystick on the top left. Um, you have the D-pad. And then middle, you have the options. And on the bottom, you have the home screen. And on the right part of the controller... On the top right of it, you have your A, B, X, Y buttons. On the bottom is the second joystick. And then you have your menu button. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so what they did was pretty ingenious if, if you think about it. They take these two things and they put them together. And if you flip on the back, there's like a little plate there. Yeah. Uh, it's, plastic. it's all plastic, but it's like a little plate. And it has two hinges, and when you unhinge the thing, that's when it expands. So um, what you then have to do is, and this is very important for anybody who has an iPhone that wants to use this, you have to take your phone out of the case. This will not work with a case. So it's very important if that's something that you're not into it, then maybe you don't get this controller. But... Um, I'm going to tell you the reasons why I believe this is a good controller to get. But you do have to take the case out. And so what you do is you take the right-hand portion and you plug it into your lightning port. And then you extend the, the left-hand side and clip it to the top of your phone. When we first took it out, it felt kind of flimsy, right, guys? Yeah. It definitely. felt like it was something that could easily break, right? Yeah. yeah. Because of the fact that the middle piece is really elastic. Yeah. You know. But, and tell me if I'm wrong on this, once the iPhone is in there, everything kind of feels pretty sturdy, right? Oh, yeah. yeah it's, okay. It's like, I guess... Well, it's kind of clamped it, in there. Yeah, it's clamped in there, and that's, that's why it feels that way. Right. And... Um, and just for reference, um, we use two different type of iPhones for this test. We used an iPhone 12 Pro Max, and that's which is my phone, and the two boys have the iPhone XR. So these are pretty sizable phones, and it fits the Razer Kishi rather well. Okay. Yeah. Um, just one thing to tell you about the Razer Kishi: it is not a Bluetooth controller. So, and there's a reason why I chose not to get a Bluetooth controller because when you have Bluetooth controllers, there generally tends to be a little lag on there. Yeah. And considering we were going to test a cloud gaming service, which may have lag inherent to that, I thought that having two places where you can have noticeable lag would probably diminish the experience. Yeah. This controller does not need any charging it takes its power from the iphone itself and the good thing about it is that on the bottom of the right hand piece if you fold it to if you flip it to the bottom there is a lightning port there so it has path pass through capability so you can plug in a battery or plug it into you know a power outlet if you're so inclined and it will actually charge your phone which is then charging the controller itself. So I think that's pretty ingenious. Um, it feels like a solid controller. It is. Guys, you agree with that? Perhaps. <laughs> okay. Um, 
Okay. <laughs> it has two joysticks, like I said before. It has a D-pad. It has the four face buttons. It has um, an L1, L2, R1, R2. And something that you don't find in a lot of Bluetooth controllers, it also has L3, R3. Mm-hmm. And if Wait. you... So you you know what that is, right? You've used it before. You just probably don't know the name of it. It's when you press the joystick in. Ah, uh, okay, yes. Okay. Uh, so there's a lot of Bluetooth controllers that don't have the capa- that capability. We have one here at home, the Steel Series Nimbus Plus, which we use to play games on our Apple TV. Yeah, that one doesn't have L3 R3 support, and I actually tried it with. Of Microsoft Cloud Gaming, and I found that that was kind of difficult to use without those things. But that's a whole nother story. So you have all these these functions and stuff. Um, you have all the buttons that you need that are necessary to play Xbox games. Guys, what do you think about the build quality? Do you think it was it's flimsy? Do you think it's something that's easily breakable? Do you find that the buttons feel nice or do you hate the placement of the joysticks tell me what you think about this here's the one thing i do think whenever i go to pause i'm normally my default is the top right right next to r2 r1 not right next to you know in that general area Mm -hmm. close to y the the top right yes Mm -hmm. it is not there right And it is a little awkward. It's all the way at the bottom beneath the second joystick. Yeah. It's a little awkward for me. I I wish that was in the top right. Uh, Same goes for the home button, but you can't really have the home button be in the center center because that's what the phone is. So that's on the lower left, which I guess is okay. What? I struggle sometimes with is that there is a button with three dots above the the home button and sometimes I'm instinctively pressing that before the home button. Mm, okay. So that brings you into the options settings, right? But it doesn't for me at least. Okay. Whenever I whenever I do it, I'm like, okay, so I press this button, nothing happens. Okay, let's press it again. Nothing really happens. I end up having to tap, actually tap the phone in order for it to to kind of work, really. So and I kind of feel you're referring to the cloud gaming service, right? Xbox. Yes, in app. Okay. So I, at least to me, I don't know. Maybe I'm just doing it wrong, but at least to me, the button with three dots on it serves like literally no purpose. Well, okay. it does though. Well, um, again, we'll that. that yeah, that that speaks to the gaming service itself, not really the layout or or the the controller itself. You know, that's I think that's more of a complaint of the gaming service, maybe not mapping the buttons to the right place. Oh, so yeah. But other than that, how how did it feel? Did did the buttons feel solid? Did they feel flimsy? Yeah, they they felt good. Um. I don't know. It's, it was a little weird because <laughs> it was a little weird having my hands so far stretched out. Like, it's like, oh, um, uh, <laughs> and then I don't know. Sometimes, like, I, I get, like, I get confused with, like, the L1, R1. Like, well, okay, well, oh, shoot, I pressed L2 instead of L1. <laughs> They are very close. So, you know, it's not like the trigger on the regular controller, which is on the back of the device. Both of the buttons are really on top of the device, right? Yeah. And they're they're really, they're basically right next to each other. So I can see where there's a, there's a tendency to press one button. And they feel pretty similar, too. Like, I mean, you can kind of make the case that L2 is a little different, but at least to me, they felt pretty similar. Excuse right. me. So if, if you look at it, L2, R2 is a bit wider. It's also much and it's curved down. And it's curved upwards, right? But L1 and R1 are higher than the L2, L, L, R2 buttons, right? Yeah. 
just a tad bit. So I guess it's a matter of just getting used to that, right? Yeah. Eli, what do you, what did you think about the controller itself? I got to tell you, it feels exactly, well, not exactly, but definitely like a Nintendo Switch. Um, uh, I'll give it credit. Um, it's very sturdy. It's it's not like, it. at first you might think it's going to be a little bit flimsy. Right, but, when, um, you first, when you first take it out and try and put it on the phone. Yeah, especially when you're trying to like stretch, uh, put, it, out. stretch it out for the phone. <laughs> it, it definitely makes you think that it's fragile and very, it, it'll break and stuff like that. But um, it's very sturdy. Um, the button placing isn't too familiar to the original Xbox controllers, but it's it works for me. Um, but here's the thing about it. Uh, I'm going to be honest here. For a shooter, uh, for shooter games, it's not necessarily the best in my opinion. Because shooter games, it's, it's a little bit different. I think it's a matter of getting used to it. And of course it is that. But um, in terms of my first experience, I don't really think that this is fit for shooters. Okay. Uh, As my first experience, it's, AJ, a, it's a little bit weird, right? No, no, that's totally fine. That and that's what we're doing. We're we're you know testing out the, yeah. the Razer Kishi. Um, AJ, you're a big fan of shooters. Do you agree with that sentiment also? Yes. <laughs> okay. So, but I, I okay. Here, here's the thing. Walt had me try Crackdown not too long ago. And you know what? It ran pretty well. It, it did. And, you know, I was able to, you know, coordinate myself in time and everything. And it was great. But that's not my go-to. My go-to is the Halo games. So what I did twice was I did the Halo Master Chief Collection. And what I did was both times I did Firefight, which is basically like uh, waves of enemies and, you know, survive. Mm -hmm. Both times, under differing circumstances, it was not good. I could not do anything because of how, like, when you turn, it takes like a million years and then like... Yeah, I know, but we're talking that's, about the controller. That's not necessarily the part of the controller. Scheme. That's only because of. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get to the get that, that, to that. But I'm saying, in terms of the layout, yeah, is that is that optimum for shooters, or do you have an issue with having the joystick on the bottom and then the the face buttons above it on the set, on the right hand side, or do you feel that? they could have placed this a little bit better to make it a little bit more intuitive in terms of how you use the controller for shooters. No, I didn't really pay any mind to that. Mm. Okay. It's, it's maybe just me. Okay. Listen, every, everybody well, every, is different. Yeah, everybody you know has their, their So their you, you may have, he might, he's a little bit more experienced than shooters, I guess. So maybe it's a little bit easier for him. I think I would have a little bit of a difficult time, but I did try it with a couple of shooters. Um, I guess because I'm used to sliding my finger down from the joystick onto the X, A, B, X, Y buttons and stuff. So it's kind of the reverse here. Instead of sliding down to hit those buttons, you got to slide up. Mm. So I don't know. Um, it's just it's just weird because I don't. It's it's weird. That. Okay, so we got the controller out of the way. Um, I we we tried a couple of different things here. So you know we did do the the cloud gaming, which we're going to get to in a second. But before we did that, we actually tried to do some native gaming on the phone itself, and we yeah. we are subscribed to App, Apple Arcade. So we figured this is a good time to try it out to see how it is when you're dealing with a game that's local to the device as opposed to Microsoft's version where you're streaming it from the cloud. So um, I'm going to go first because I think I played more of the arcade games than you guys did, right? Um, I tried a couple of games just to see how it felt like, and I'm going to give you a list of the games that I tried. I tried Asphalt 9. I tried... Uh, Oceanhorn 2, which is resonant to 
Apple Arcade. I tried Samurai Jack, which is also an Apple Arcade game. And I did try also Assassin's Creed Identity and Call of Duty Mobile. So I, I did... I did a pretty decent run through with with these type of games. Um, I'm gonna say this: I think that the Razer Kishi worked really well with the iPhone games. Uh, there was there was literally almost zero lag. I mean, I did notice in certain cases that you know there was probably a millisecond lag in terms of when you press a face button, but other than that, I was fine. Um, Asphalt work worked perfectly. Oceanhorn was was really just amazing in terms of, you know, you're actually playing a AAA type game on a phone with a controller and it's working perfectly. Um, Assassin's Creed was a little wonky, but I think that may be more of a case where, you know, the developer hasn't updated the game quite recently. So maybe it's not really fully updated for controller support. Um, but the other two games that I tried, which was, um, Ocean, like I said, Ocean Horn was amazing. And Call of Duty Mobile is such a, an amazing experience with a controller. It really, really is. And I appreciate the fact, and again, this goes back to Assassin's Creed. When you put the game on, it recognizes that it, there's control yeah. a controller on, and it actually goes through kind of like the screens showing you what you need to do now that you're using a controller and i'm i know i'm a rookie in call of duty mobile oh my god and i'm pretty i'm pretty good as a rookie but i felt next level using the razor kishi really yeah and i mean it was it felt easier turning it felt easier aiming um you know shooting and all that stuff is kind of is kind of you know, whatever. But I think the movement is really improved by the Razor Kishi. Maybe I need to try it because yeah. usually, I don't know. I feel that for Call of Duty, I like Call of Duty Mobile. Go check it out because it's an amazing game. Uh, I usually prefer uh, the touch just screen? touch screen because it's it's easier at least for me because it has that sensitivity. Did was the sensitivity affected in any way? Um. Honestly, I, I don't play it as much as you do. So it's been it's been like about a month or so since I played Call of Duty Mobile. It's been more than a month. Yeah. For me. So but you played it a lot more often than I have. Yeah. So for me, sensitivity was fine. And I'm pretty sure if you probably dig into the menu screens, you can probably find um, you know, settings for sensitivity. Mm-hmm. So and like I said, it seems like it's really adapted for controller support there. Um and like I said, I I, w- I was MVP, which is something that happens every once in a while, but I was MVP by MVP by a large amount. I had in a 50 kill game, I had like 27 kills. Ah, you're in the rookie class. Though. I know, I know, but I'm just saying <laughs> for me, it, it was such a, you could yeah, tell that there was a difference and stuff, yeah. you know? So that's what I said. E, you tried a couple of games on Apple Arcade also, right? Yes. Uh, I think it was actually only one. Um, cause I was playing more on, uh, cloud nine gaming, which we'll get into. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually played a little bit of samurai Jack. Um, I don't remember what it's called. I'm going to need to check. I'll, I'll check for you. Samurai, just samurai Jack, right? It's an uh, adult swim game. Yeah. It's an adult swim game. I believe it's third person, right? It's third person. Yes, it is. And, um, third honestly, person 3d third person 3d, of course it's called, yeah, it's called just samurai Jack. Yeah, Samurai Jack, right? And um, I gotta tell you that FPS for that, I don't know. Maybe it, it maybe it just felt like uh, different to me, but I felt that it was like boosted or something. Like you, normally, my phone my phone runs pretty well. Uh, I have an XR, of course, but um, it it just felt different in a way. I don't know how to explain it. Um, it okay. wasn't even the controller or anything, but um. Yeah, it's it was pretty good. There wasn't really any lag except for maybe like that point where I got to fight way too many enemies. Mm-hmm. But um, and that could be just a, a graphical limitation yeah. of the game itself. Yeah, and um, really, I didn't really have a problem with Apple Arcade. It okay. wasn't anything too bad. 
AJ, you tried some Apple Arcade games, some Apple games, right? I only tried one and another mobile game. I don't know the name of the one you passed on to me, though. That it was, was the one with the sword, and Ocean you were Horn like... Toon. Oh, Ocean Horn 2. Yeah, that one. Very much like Breath of the Wild, right? It's a... I've never played that game. Okay. Well, trust me, it's, it's like that. Okay. So, yeah, Ocean Horn 2 was the one. Yeah, it played pretty flawlessly, as did the other mobile game I played, which was Minecraft Pocket Edition. Mm. And that one, wow. <laughs> I was surprised by how sharp I, I, I could do stuff. Like, I was actually able to very successfully lead my shots with villagers that were running away from me. And that's something that I struggle to do normally. Mm. That's how well it, it worked for me. So I, I guess an overall positive experience on games that are native to the iPhone, right? Yeah. Games that are easily found on the App Store, downloaded onto your device, and Apple Arcade games, again, downloaded onto your device, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I guess we can say that um, in terms of games that are on your device, the Razer Kishi works really, really well, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, definitely. All positive for me. Okay. Now we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of this thing. And I, I know AJ already alluded to it earlier with his Halo <laughs> Halo experience. But we're going we're gonna to be talking about Microsoft's foray into cloud gaming, which they aptly call cloud gaming. And so what Microsoft is trying to do now is they're taking all their games that are available on Game Pass Ultimate. And we're talking about 100-plus games um, and really big games, if you think about it, because there are EA games, there are Bethesda games on there, games like Skyrim. There are a lot of games. There's a lot of games. You have Battlefield. You have, you know, the Forza like games. Battlefield is on this? Yes, Battlefield is on oh, there. Oh, I should have. Um, you have games like Halo, Doom Eternal, uh, No Man's Sky, which I believe Eli tried. Um, and you know, we're, we're talking about actual Xbox games here. And so what Microsoft is trying to do is they're trying to take their platform mobile. And so, you know, we already had the instance where they've made, uh, games available to PC players. So you can download these games on PC and play them. They've also opened up cloud gaming to Android. And so now the interesting thing about the difference between Android and iOS is that Android allows you to use the actual Game Pass app to get into cloud gaming. iOS, and the reason why iOS is lagging behind in this is because iOS, their policies are that if you're going to submit something to the App Store, you're going to have to submit them as a one-off. So if Microsoft went using the App Store policies, you would have hundreds of games that you would have to download onto your device in order to play. So the workaround is that you're using the mobile browser Safari to access this and play. So you have to go to Safari and put a bookmark yeah. on your home screen and then sign in that way. Um, Again, all these games are not located on your device. You're actually streaming it from the cloud. And Microsoft requires you to play this on a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection, which makes sense because that is the faster of the two types of Wi-Fi. You have 2.4 and you have 5 gigahertz. And they also say that you can use it as a, on a mobile connection also. So if you have T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon, or what have you, and you're out and about, this gives you the opportunity to play wherever you are. Huh. So that's the good thing about it. Let's talk about our experience with the beta. And again, this is a beta. I'd like to remind everyone um, invites went out to certain people, so this is not available to the public as of yet. This is, again, just a beta testing. Yeah. So they're trying to get, you know, a bunch of gamers 
that have these devices to actually play these games and give them feedback so that they can further enhance the service and make it better before they roll it out to the masses. And we were fortunate enough to get an invite, so that's why we're here and we're talking about it. Um, so we've already gone with how the Razer Kishi works, and I think we're pretty excited, and I think that we can say that it's a solid device to use. But now let's talk about the Microsoft Cloud Gaming Service, okay? Again, it's you're using Safari to get into it, but it has almost all the games that are on Game Pass Ultimate. Mm-hmm. So again, you like I said, you can go on to Halo. We tried it on 5G. Now, normally our we have a gigabit connection, but unfortunately we had an incident where a truck knocked down a pole. So we've been we've been having mm-hmm. spotty internet. So I'm gonna kind of put that disclaimer out there, but we're still running at least a good 100, 150 megs per per second on, yeah. the, on the downloads and uploads. So mm-hmm. we still are on a pretty speedy connection as it is. Um, you guys played it more than I do. Really? Yeah. I, I played just a couple of games. I played two, both of the Forza games, both Forza 7 and Forza Horizon 4. Um. I did try out Halo for a little bit. I tried Crackdown 3, mm-hmm. but I didn't have as much, you know, access to it like you guys did. Um, so I'm going to really give this segment out to you guys. And basically what I'm going to ask is, what do you, first, what do you think of the concept of the service? The concept so what exactly by that so we know that we know that it's a beta test so there are going to be issues here and there right Mm -hmm. but we also know that this is what microsoft is trying to do so i guess my question is the concept of being able to play xbox games on your phone aj what's what's your thought about that I think that it is cool in concept, but to actually execute that concept, um, that at least as far as I've seen so far, there's still a bit of ways to go. But I think if they're able to do it, that that would actually be really cool. Because, like, one of the... okay. I'm going to give like a sort of brief layout of what it's like here. All of the main, like all the new game consoles, like PS4, Xbox One, that's in our living room. Me and Eli each have a 360 in our rooms. Yeah. Yeah. That Xbox One and PS4 generally... There are some times that we do get to use it, but generally is cut off from us. So, and we've had some workarounds. Uh, Walt was able to find us some like streaming apps that have worked and yeah, hey, they work. But with this, this can kind of turn that on its head and, you know, like now I don't have to... <laughs> I think it's a good it's a good thing if they can do it because now you don't necessarily need to have access to an Xbox One. Now you could just do it straight from your phone or your iPad or whatever the heck you want to use. It, it's yeah. it's almost like you don't even need an Xbox anymore if you think about it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because you can you can you can use these games on your PC. You can play these games on your PC. Um, Eli, what do you think about that? I think this concept is, uh, it's just what it is. It's a concept. I don't think it's something that can necessarily be fully and per- perfectly achieved. Um, but it's nice to know that they're trying to start it. Um, I think this is good for a lot of people who don't necessarily have an Xbox or a PS4. Or they just, maybe they did and they just sold it for some reason. Mm-hmm. Or and stuff like that, right? And I I feel like that provides a little bit of a way to 
do what you want with games. It, it, it looks like Microsoft is really heading almost in, in kind of an Apple way away from hardware and more into services, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, you know, it's a way to have, you know, a, a more, a, a bigger, um, gaming community. Main, yeah, exactly. Because, you know, and now you're not really tied to the console. You know, if you, if you sign up for game pass ultimate, you have the availability to play these games. And my understanding is, this thing really works when you're when you're using a PC. It works amazing. There's mm -hmm. like zero lag, especially if you're wired. It works amazing. Um, but our experience with iOS, and again, I, I have to put this disclaimer out. We are beta testing um, the cloud gaming service on iOS. So it's a beta test. This is not the actual product yet. They're still in trying to work out the kinks but our experience with ios was kind of all over the place right i think that it varies <laughs> well yes it, it really does vary depending on what game you're playing of course and uh so what are the games that you tried on on cloud gaming because i think you had the least amount of time yeah. just because you had so much freaking homework to do this weekend and um, and art right yeah i had to do some homework and stuff you know yeah um but uh i only got to try i think it was through four games okay four games and honestly um there's no really uh there's no way to describe it all um but i felt that it varied um Varied by game, and I think yeah. that's the experience that we all had. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so w w what are the games that you tried? I know you tried this Carry game on. called Carry On, yeah. Okay, carry, oh, carry, on. On. carry On, it's so Carry On, bro. It is Carry On, it's Carry On, I'm sure. Okay. Um, how uh, did that play? Uh, it played pretty well. I it played as I expected. It's a it's um. It's, it's not a, a graphically heavy game. Yeah, it's not really something that I would expect for lag or anything like that. Um, it was flawless. Played just like a regular Xbox. Um, I, the controls were a little bit weird to start. Um, I had trouble figuring out. I don't know. It just felt like um, it just felt like I just started a whole new started. I started from scratch with. Okay my gaming experience right okay because i had to figure out how to work it um but i would say that it was positive there wasn't really anything bad about it i i tried another game i think after that i tried katana katana one i think it was called um katana zero oh katana zero <laughs> katana zero which that just showed up uh in i guess your recommended i would say yeah katana one is the sequel <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Consana <laughs> right? Zero. Yes. Okay. And um, bad dad joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, it was good. It was good to say the least. Uh, I never played that game, so it, it was just there in my recommended, and I had no idea what the heck it was. But it looked interesting. Okay. Um, that was another platform game that wasn't graphic heavy yeah and it was very the fps was flawless there wasn't any time at all where i where i recall um i had trouble with the lag or anything like that it was flawless um i moved i tried uh doom eternal doom eternal In that game I, I i really was looking forward to and i gotta say I'm I'm trying to I'm gonna try and um give it credit because this is a beta, but uh the the frame rates were slow like around three maybe, um it was very laggy the the input for the controllers were very slow, um it was unplayable right. it was to that point but again it's a beta and we need you guys to understand that right yeah it's, a and beta. it's also a very graphical yeah that's very uh, graphic very heavy, heavy graphic you know game yeah so, mm -hmm. so i mean it, it was understandable but i was looking a little bit forward to that but mm, it, it was it wasn't it was 
it wasn't a really good experience. Okay. So, what was the last game that you tried? I think the last game. You tried Halo, didn't you? No, I didn't. Oh, you didn't. I tr- I wanted to try Skyrim and GTA Five. Skyrim apparently it couldn't handle the mods. Oh, okay. But then again, yeah, that's that's not something that's really yeah built into the game. Yeah. Okay. And GTA Five, I wanted to try, but I didn't want to go on your profile. But that's that's something else. Right? <laughs> okay. But um, otherwise, yeah, I think it's I think it's overall my experience was in the middle. In okay. The middle. AJ, what about you? I think you had the toughest time. You also played the 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 cloud gaming the most, right? Out of all of us. Yeah, I think you did. Yeah, he did. I don't think I did, but okay, you did. How was your experience of Microsoft's cloud gaming beta? The first game I played was Injustice Two. Okay. I did single player versus mode versus a machine. It ran well. It did. Um, The only thing I will say is that I don't know this. I, I, I don't know maybe if it was the remote or the game itself, but sometimes I would find that performing because Mortal Kombat is a very combos heavy game. Yes. Right? I often found, when when I did it, I found I couldn't do the combos I was looking for. Either because maybe, uh, maybe I just wasn't doing it fast enough. Heck, maybe I forgot how to actually do it. Or it changed, uh, because sometimes they update this, but it's not an update by much. Um, I mean, it was still playable. It, it really was, but I I don't know. It it just felt a little weird, okay. just a little bit. But I think it still ran well. I think that's the that network lag that probably is is affecting the button pushing, right? Because yeah. Twitch games, you need to have a perfect connection to do these kind of things because you're do, it's that's what it is. It's Twitch. You have to push those buttons quickly, right? So maybe you couldn't do that with Injustice too, because that's again a Twitch game. Yeah, A A A, A X A, you know things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna go in order of best to worst. Okay. Technically, Crackdown should have come first because that was the most flawless out of all of them I played. Um, you were able to shoot and aim properly. It's not like I had to wait like a billion years for him to turn. And when it did, it didn't go like, ooh, far past what I intended it to be. Mm-hmm. It was perfect. 10 out of 10. Would recommend. Okay. That's all I'm going to say on that. The next game was Ark Survival. That one, it ran well at first. But after a while, it got like really, really, really slow. Okay. Arc Arc Survival is a shooter, right? No, no it's not. Not necessarily. It's, it's like game. think it's, of it as like Skyrim and Minecraft combined. Oh, okay. So it's like an adventure type of sandbox game. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't. I haven't played that all that much, so I didn't remember. Okay. Yeah. So that one, again, like I said, it ran pretty smoothly at first, but then as you progressed, it was like, wow. <laughs> okay. And then the worst one, sadly to say. And that was Halo the Master Chief Collection. But on the Master Chief Collection, I ran Halo Reach. And when I did Firefight, like I mentioned earlier, it was it was unplayable. <laughs> it was unplayable. Like, uh, again, I turned... It would take a million years, and then it would overshoot. I would aim, but by the time I actually shot, the dude was already like five meters away. (laughs) (laughs) Or even running away. (laughs) I'd be like, oh, God, I have to run. (laughs) But I, I wouldn't have... It would be so slow that they would get so many shots in at me that I would just die. So in one frame, you're running, and in the next frame, you're dead. Yes, basically. (laughs) Well, you know what? That reminds me a lot 
of how online gaming started because I remember there were plenty of times when we were playing online using America online. And yes, there were times where all of a sudden you would be ghosted by somebody that you didn't even know was there, <laughs> but then all of a sudden boop, they just pop up and you're dead, you know? <laughs> So we're we're back in the early days of internet, you know, <laughs> online internet and stuff. Um, let me ask you a question with Halo because I did play Halo Reach on the iPad using the Steel Series Nimbus, which again really doesn't work well. You probably need the the Steel Series Stratus XL, but I played Halo Reach using the iPad, and I don't know if maybe maybe you found the exact same experience that I did that when things were kind of relaxed, that's when the game worked well. But then when you started seeing more and more elements, like more enemies on the screen, that's when it started to really, really start getting to a crawl. Yeah. That I, now that it, now that I look back on it, that is more or less what happened because in, in halo, what often tends to happen is, they, when the waves, and especially in the wave matches, they come in drop ships, and then the drop ships will will shoot you with these like concussive blasts, mm -hmm. and then they'll start loading them off. So, when the drop ships started getting there, it was it was still fine. When they started shooting, it was like okay, so now we're a little slower. By the time they were getting out, it's like okay, it's really getting slow now. When all of them got to you and started shooting at you, that's when it was just completely impossible. <laughs> because now not only are they shooting at you with God knows how many different types of weapons, they're also throwing grenades at you when they can. <laughs> so it's utter chaos at that point, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you know what? There there might be something to that that, you know, um, when the the action gets hot and heavy, you know, well, that's, yeah, when, that's when that's when that's when things start to slow down. So maybe that could be something that Microsoft can work on on their end, you know, you know to kind of optimize wait. everything. Uh, I'm just thinking about this now, too. Technically, I don't know if this will play a factor into it. Technically, the Master Chief Collection is five games in total. That could be a, 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 a thing also because, you know, you're talking about a game, a huge game, right? Yeah. And you're probably trying to stream it, so you know that that could be another reason. There's there's a ton of reasons that you know we can we can probably throw out there, um, but that's what the the point of a beta test is, right? To kind of find these weaknesses and find these issues, and then have those engineers over there at Microsoft actually work on them and and make it better, right? Because it's a closed beta test right now. You know, yeah. there's only a, a limited amount of people. But imagine when they open this up, you're going to have thousands, if not millions of people trying to get onto the service. Oh, they yeah. got to find a way to get this working. That's and I'm, I'm pretty sure they will because, heck, it's Microsoft, right? That's what they do. But in this iteration, I think our experience in general is like the the more high fidelity games, the higher, the, the clearer, the better graphics, yeah. and especially when those action heavy games when there's a lot of things going on on the screen i think that's when the service really starts to degrade a little bit um eli you want to say something right i actually now i remember what game i played no man's sky oh yes that's right that's true and, and that's the first time that you've played it right yeah and to keep it uh short and simple it was unplayable but anyway um i wanted to ask you guys a question how do you think this is going to work with online and PvP? Because I don't know if they that, plan on doing that. And I just find they do. Like, yeah, that's oh that's part of the strategy. They're, they're trying to make this service um, almost identical to the service, the, the, the experience that you have playing at home with the Xbox. Because that's the whole the lure of it, right? You can take your Xbox with you anywhere you go. So eventually, they're probably going to... That's probably going to be another beta in of itself. Well, actually, no. You can actually play multiplayer right well, now yeah. on some of these games. Maybe yes, we because to, we that, that. That, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's what I was actually going to say just now. Because multiplayer, at least from what I saw, was available 
in Master Chief Collection. I, I can. Oh, that should have been super interesting to try. Oh god! <laughs> uh, if you had that issue with firefight, imagine if you have that issue with how many players can be on a on a Halo map? Up to around twenty at the most. Ooh. Oh no, that's not good. <laughs> we've got we've got to try that before before anything. But you know what? I, I suggest that we try it. Um, sometime after Monday, because they, Verizon did say that they're going to restore our gigabit service on them, so we'll have an even, we'll have ten times the connection that we have now. You know, maybe we'll do a second part. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can always revisit this, and and remember, this is a beta test, so they're going to continue based on our observations, yeah. and that's the interesting thing. After you finish a game, there's it, always a recommendation, right? There's always that last screen, so it doesn't take you directly back to game pass because it's a beta they're asking you questions so some there's the initial thing that they that you see is good or bad right Mm -hmm. and depending on which you choose then it it drills down to different things so you know if if you say that you just had a bad experience then it brings you to another screen where it's asking you about the network it asks you about the game itself it asks you about the controller issues and i forget the fourth option but there you can really kind of drill down and let Microsoft know what were the issues that you were having. Oh, multiplayer. I think that's the fourth option. Yeah. Oh, um, shoot. So, you know, again, a beta version. They're trying to work out the kinks. Um, but it's clearly clear right now, at least from our experience, that there's still some work that needs to be done. Right? And yes. I have one last quick question they don't add they don't plan to add anything outside of game pass right what do you mean like any other games it's just game pass that's another thing i was looking for like far cry primal yeah and and far cry 4 i was looking for call of duty so so again um being that this is a beta um they are giving you the majority of game pass ultimate games but they're not giving you everything just yet so there are some games that are on game pass ultimate that you will not see in the beta version right now so you know there and and again i think what they're trying to do is they're trying to streamline the experience to kind of give you a big enough um a big enough catalog so that you're, there are different experiences that you can see. So, you know, there are some sports games there, shooters. I want to say, like, about maybe 75% of all the games that are on Game yeah. Pass Ultimate are on the beta and available to play. But I know that there's stuff that is not there. So, um, but again, you know, it's it's a work in progress. So, you know, we've got we've to gotta look at it in that vein, you know. Um, I happened to try a couple of games out and i'm gonna share that experience with you guys um like i said before i tried forza horizon 4 and forza 7 because you know i love racing games right yeah and i think this is a really good way to to find out you know how well this works because especially in forza horizon 4 that's a game that's multiplayer and Mm -hmm. so there are cars on there kind of like test drive where those cars are actually other players and I had one try to race me and stuff like that, and I had to decline because of the fact that the game was too stuttery for me. So, you know, that guy was probably sitting down home on his couch on an Xbox saying, huh, I could probably beat this guy and me. Meanwhile, I'm here using the Razer Kishi on my <laughs> iPhone, you know, with stuttering issues. I wasn't about to try and get into a race with him. Um, so both games were... Uh, difficult to play. They weren't as unplayable as I think you you mentioned with Halo. I did find that Horizon Horizon Four was a worse experience than than Forza Seven, but Forza Seven again, and I think this is kind of the common thread with all of us. Forza Seven really started to struggle when there was a lot of cars on the screen. Mm-hmm. And at that point, it became one of these things where it was jumping frames and I didn't actually see how I was crashing. I just knew that I crashed. But the thing is, and this is, again, the common thread, once those cars were gone, 
it became a little bit easier to drive. Now, mm. those frame rate and the stuttering was still there, but it wasn't as bad when all the cars were on screen. Um, too many eyes and stuff there's like that. Too, many, too many things, and I think that's, that's part of the thing that Microsoft needs to optimize. Uh, another game that I tried was Halo, and I tried Halo Reach, and like I said, I started from the very beginning where there were, I did the campaign. I didn't do Firefight. And the campaign at the very beginning is just basically them telling a story. And in that, that respect, Halo worked perfectly. When you started to introduce more elements on the screen, that's when it started to stutter and, and misfire and, and really, really start to grind down. So I think, again, it's a matter of optimization that Microsoft has to do. Um, there was one other game that I tried. Oh, Crackdown. Crackdown. Crackdown 3. That was flawless. I don't know the reason why. Maybe it's because it's a Microsoft game itself. Um, maybe it's not as, as graphically intense as Halo is. Um, there are certain elements on the screen, but for whatever reason, we didn't have those issues, right? So it's a mixed bag right now. Um, so that being said, I think my personal opinion, and I want to ask you guys before we wrap this up, and I'm going to start with, you know, once I give my opinion, I want Eli and then AJ can kind of wrap this up for us. Um, my impression of the Microsoft Cloud Gaming is that, in theory, this is something to be super excited about. Hmm. Because the ability to jump into a car and go somewhere and have the ability to play Xbox on your iPhone is pretty exciting to me, you know? And there are some games on Game Pass that are touch-enabled. So you can actually use a controller, uh, uh, the game, play the game without a controller. I didn't try any of those. But I think in theory, it's a super exciting thing to think about, that you can technically have an Xbox in your pocket and play Halo or Skyrim or Grand Theft Auto or Fallout, you know, any of those games away from home. I think that's pretty exciting. In practice, however, um, at least with this beta, and again, I stress it, and I've been stressing it before, but this is a beta. In practice, there's still a lot of things that need to be worked out. E, what do you think? Uh, well... I didn't really even try too much games. Um, I plan to try more. I want to try some shooters because I'm really intrigued about uh, what you guys said. Um, but um, overall, it's I, it's it's really hard to explain. There 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 are some games that work perfectly, and then some games were just beyond unplayable, right? Mm -hmm. And and like Doom Eternal. Even when it was calm for me, I couldn't play it, right? And you had stuff like that, right? Um, it's before I give it a good review. Um, but you know, whatever. Um, it was good. Sometimes, fifty percent. Okay, AJ. You know, I just remembered. I actually did try, like a a brief second. Of what was it, Doom or Doom Eternal? I Doom don't know. Eternal which one. Doom Eternal. Harsh. Like, At the very beginning, it was okay. Yes, but then once <laughs> more of them came in, there, there was one part where I actually fell into a lava pit. <laughs> and I remember that. <laughs> when, um, and when I died, or as I was dying, I, I just I did the little Terminator Judgment Day thumbs up. <laughs> As he was sinking into the lava. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. This is, for me, that was like the, that, that was just like the, the service saying, GG, you tried. <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's how I interpreted that. <laughs> yeah, that, that actually kind of, that actually kind of works, you know, because it's a good try, right? But you're still sinking. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, um, you know, I just started thinking about this literally right now, and I didn't know why I didn't think of it earlier. This is exciting, but if they actually are able to work out the kinks of this and, like, 
just completely revolutionize how they distribute their product. I, I want to pose this question. How greatly or how devastating do you think this will be to the mobile gaming arena? Because I think it's going to take a pretty tough hit. Well, it, it really depends on... on uh, it depends on the audience, and I'm I'm sorry I'm I'm you know I'm I'm a little here you know I'm I'm thinking about this while I'm trying to respond to you. I think it depends on the audience because you're going to have two different type of audiences when you when you when you're dealing with this. Um, the hardcore gamers are really going to gravitate toward this because these are the guys that are willing to put in time on their phone to play a Halo. And, and run through the campaign and stuff like that. A lot of people use mobile gaming gaming as a, a quick five minute thing. And I think that's where that's where you're gonna have the divide between the two. Because you're gonna have the people who love playing Candy Crush saga, and then you're gonna have the people that wanna play a full blown Halo on their on their phone. For the people that are doing Candy Crush that are doing, you know, um, Call of Duty Mobile and stuff like that. Those are those are very short experiences. Those are the type of experiences that you do while you're in the bathroom on the toilet, you know, mm-hmm. and stuff. Those are, you know, when you're at work and you want to take a break, you run to the bathroom, play a little game, and then come back and you're you're fine. I don't think those people will be excited about this, but. I generally tend to think that they're, I mean, hey, it could be that they're not a smaller population, but you ask me, I think that they are the smaller of the population because they're not really the gamer types, you know? You'd be surprised mm-hmm. how big mobile gaming is and how much money is made through mobile gaming. It really is a huge, huge industry. It's not Xbox type numbers. But it's getting pretty damn close. You know, it's it's a huge industry. So I, I think it serves both people well. And maybe those mobile gamers, they jump into the Xbox, you know, okay, arena. But then stuff. you're taking away from the traffic of the mobile arena. Which is something, and that's kind of the reason why I believe Apple gave Microsoft such a hard time in letting them do this. Because Apple has their own gaming um, system, Apple Arcade, which they've been pushing Mm -hmm. and they've been improving Mm -hmm. because since Apple Arcade first came out, we actually tried it for about three months. It wasn't the greatest service, but now they're really, really bringing in some exciting games, some games that almost rival PlayStation and Xbox in their scope. So I think those are the two, the two, that's the big fight that you're going to see right now. You know, that and Nintendo, because remember, Nintendo is really the mobile gaming giant with the DS, with the Game Boy. Oh, but I'm talking about like, I'm talking about like on like Uh, mobile, like phones. No, 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 I know, but but you're, you're, you're now encringing on Nintendo's arena because Nintendo has always been famous for having portable devices that play games. Now you're saying Microsoft is now jumping into that arena with cloud gaming, which now makes any device you have. You don't have to buy one. The, the existing phone that you have might actually work for that. That's big for Nintendo because now you don't have to buy a Switch to play these games. All you got to do is subscribe to the service and you get hundreds of games that you can play on your phone. So the, the, the big question to me is that not how it impacts mobile gaming, but how it impacts Nintendo's um, way of doing things. Because now mm-hmm. I think this is more of a direct competitor with Nintendo and the Switch more than anything else. I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, honestly, the only reason why I ask that is because... It's a good question to ask, though. If I had a choice between playing GTA V or... Or, uh, like you said, Halo or Far Cry Primal over Dragon Ball Legends. Mm-hmm. 
I think you know which one I'm really going to go for. Right. <laughs> so that's you're, what I mean. That's what I mean by that. You're a gamer. So I, I, I can totally see how that, that would work for you. Um, for me, I would, just because of how busy I am, especially with work and all that stuff, and then taking care of the podcasts and whatnot, for me, I'm more of the person that would appreciate those smaller experiences. So while it's exciting to have the, the capacity to play a Halo and a Skyrim, you know, I don't see myself totally falling into that just because of the lack of time that I have. And so a Dragon Ball Legends or, you know, uh, a Call of Duty mobile is, is a better experience for me just because of my limited time. You know, um, Eli, what do you think? I don't, I, I really, I don't really think that this is going to be revolutionary. In fact, I don't even really think it's going to make an, an, an impact at all. Um, because, um, yes, it's, it's sort of bringing the whole idea of, oh, Xbox is portable. But, um, if you're, a, if you're a real gamer, I, I don't necessarily think you would be looking for that sort of experience where you're on your phone and you're being and and it's and it's portable. I don't really think that that's the experience um maybe that's like it. my friends would have um because I know my friends like to play Fortnite and all that on or Call of Duty. I don't really even know. But um I don't really think that they would be totally intrigued by this idea. And I feel like the division there between mobile gamers and is very strong and i don't think that this is gonna really i guess sort of connect it all I mean, in okay but like riddle me this um at least when i was in middle school uh a popular culture trend i guess you could say in the lunchroom was if you had a phone or heck even if you had your, you happen to have your Game Boy or your, your Nintendo DS, you would play it during that thirty or so minutes. You have to play during lunch. Yeah. In middle school. Yeah. What the frick! Damn. <laughs> oh, so I guess that's not a thing, you guys. No. Okay, so then this question doesn't really apply to you, but, but just- for the schools that more or less give you that freedom, or you're able to manage that freedom what do you think like if you were given the chance to play whatever mobile game you have or if you're a younger person Fortnite, you really think that's not going to change the way no no i don't no. i don't see that changing anything at all it's still going to be the same uh no matter what I'm sure there are going to be people who have that sort of thing but it's not going to it's not going to be like, ooh la la, that's such a new trend. We need to get it, right? It's not going to be that sort of thing. Um, that's what you have Nintendo Switches for um, and Nintendo for. But this, um, unless you really revolutionize it, like with games like Call of Duty, which I have no I, I have no, no, no. I don't even think they're, they're going to do something like that, right? Um, unless you do something like that, then it stands... A chance, a slim one, a very slim one, and I'm not even talking about like, uh, oh, there's gonna be some people in the lunchroom. I think it's just gonna be like a very small amount of people, unless the, if they really revol- revolutionize it, <laughs> then maybe, maybe. Interesting. All right. So there you have it. Um, we went through today uh, a quick review of the Razer Kishi. We talked about how it works with Apple Arcade, and we had a proper review of the beta version of Microsoft's cloud gaming service. Um, And again, this was specific to iOS because that's the recent one that they've opened it up to. Previously, people who are on Windows and PC and um, Android had the ability to play this, but not people on iOS. And for the reasons that we spoke up about before, um, I think it's uh, the Razer Kishi gets a thumbs up from us. I think mm-hmm. Apple Arcade gets a thumbs up for us, especially with all the new games that are coming out for their, their service. And I think the beta version of Microsoft's cloud gaming 
is it kind of sits somewhere in the middle for us. Um, some of us had some positive experiences, some of them, some of us didn't, but we do recognize that it is a beta and it's still a work in progress, a very, very early work in progress. And I think the general feeling, except for maybe Eli, is that, you know, there is some excitement. Um, and you know what? Maybe Eli changes his mind when some of these things get better fleshed out. What but, you know, it, he also has the opinion that it won't, and that's perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. You know? There are some people who like it and some people don't, and that's the way the world works. No, I'm not saying that I don't like it. No, no, I know. No, no, I, I know you're saying, but I don't... Okay, maybe I should rephrase that. I don't think you think it's as revolutionary as me and AJ think it, it yeah. will be, you know. Um, but that being said, I think we had a pretty, pretty good sense of what Microsoft is trying to do. Trying. They're just not there yet. But keep at it, Microsoft, because if you do pull it off, a lot of people are going to love you for it. And you will take over the world. Hold on, hold on. Here's, okay. some, here's some very, very good advice for Microsoft. If you're going to do something like this, first off, you need to make multi, you you need to update it. And um, you guys know that. But what you need is hype. You need, you need the hype. hype. The hype is in the games that they're already going to come out with. Nah, they need to have more hype. This needs to, if they want this to really work, hype is the only thing that you need. Well, I think I think they've they've started with it, but I, I I tend to agree with Eli on this aspect. They've been focused on the Game Pass Ultimate as a service by signing Electronic Arts to their platform and and making those games available, and especially the fact that they've bought Bethesda and they have Bungie Studios on there. Um, that that is something that's you know really really exciting for their thing that now those games are now available on game pass now i think to eli's point they really have to start hyping up the fact that this yeah, cloud gaming is is coming but again I didn't, I didn't even know that the android version came out and you, oh yeah and i consider myself a gamer but um yeah the android version has been out for that. for quite a bit and again it's different because you can actually use the app to, to play the games, whereas on iOS, they've kind of had that walled garden, so they don't let you do that. So you have to do the workaround of using Safari. But, yeah, I think um, a little bit more advertising and just letting people know that this thing is out there. But, again, this is a closed beta yeah, by well. invitation only. So they're, wor- they're probably going to say, you know what, once we've got this thing down pat, maybe that's when we're going to really, really – hit overdrive on the ad advertisements of this service yeah. but all right so on that note we are going to close our podcast thank you for listening with us i hope you got some pretty good information on all the things that we talked about today and we hope to see you next week on tuesday when we have a brand new episode of the cross gen podcast coming to you uh but until then i am walt this is Xbox, X-Man, X-Cloud Gaming, AJ. <laughs> this is, uh, should I have a nickname or no? Micro Eli. No, no. I don't know. Eli Soft. Lag. Uh, lag Free Larry? Lag Free. Oh, Lag Free Eli, though. That would, yeah. Lag Free Eli. All right, that works. And... May our shoot. I was just thinking this a couple of seconds ago. May our online cross, cross pass. May our online matches cross paths again. Like you know how in Call of Duty you have like matches and stuff, and then it's online. It's cross platform. It's cross pl- cross play. No, no cross, cross platform. Play. Yeah, cross. No, no, play. correct. Yeah. It's may a, our may our online parties cross again? Okay, there there we go. That's matches. Eh, you know, yeah, that 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 sort of goes just to Call of Duty and stuff like that. Um, yeah, may our online cross again. Yes, you guys need hype. Sounds hype. Good.
Look, hype it up, Microsoft. If you want hype, I'm your hype beast right here. I am your hype beast. I can already imagine the commercial. They're showing footage of like the newest game. Let's say Halo Infinite. You know, it's some pretty awesome stuff. Oh, he just assassinated that brood and crashed that pelican into like a, a freaking wraith. And then and he's you doing see it at the bus stop. Yeah, no, no. It slowly zooms out to a person playing on their phone using that, yeah. using the oh Razor God, Kishi. The Razor Kishi. And then it fades to green, or rather, the whole screen turns green, and it says, yeah, you know, they'll come up with some catchy, catchy thing like now mobile, whatever. Mm-hmm. Look, and then Xbox. Y'all don't even need to be eloquent with your freaking um, trailers and stuff. Try and make it like funny, I guess. Uh, I mean, you want to and try and get like trying to make it a little bit community based. Get, like, Ryan, get Ryan Reynolds to do Ryan it. Ryan Reynolds. If Ryan Reynolds was there, I swear to God, that would be amazing. But don't do like YouTube rewinds. Don't freaking do YouTube rewinds because if you try and overdo it, it's gonna it's gonna look cringy as all hell. Just right. yeah, whatever. That works. Hype beast, I'm here. I'm here. Later, people. <laughs>